Sap, it's Penny Wild, the black pen. Pen really pen elim nyama. It's Penny Wild, the swart pen. I was doing a bit of research because I was trying to figure out there's a levy system that the Economic Freedom Fighters uh, has on its members. It's members of parliament, it's MPs, the MPLs, and I think other people as well, which I think is really dope and it's a really great idea. And I'm, I'm going to speak about it briefly. I don't have much info, but I'm going to speak about it briefly. But I just came upon this article. <sighs> kind of makes me sad, but uh, these are the things that we need to be speaking about. News 24, back in August 2019, written by Jan Gerber. President Cyril Ramaphosa gave money to two EFF MPs as an act of generosity with no strings attached, he told the National Assembly Thursday. Earlier this week, EFF MPs Dibu Khomukwele and Nkakhisang, Nkakhisang, sorry, Nkakhisang Mukhosi, resigned from Parliament and the party's central command team, central command team, after admitting they had received money from Ramaphosa's CR17 ANC presidency campaign. Both of them received 80,000 rand between 2017 and 2019. Yeah. You can read the whole article, and, and I think I'll post, I'll post the link in the description for those who want to read it, because it, it goes into detail. But it's just a reminder for me of how many bribes Cyril has given, of course, to ANC members who probably voted for him to become president uh, initially and the second time around. But now the fact that he also gives money to members of other opposition parties, and these were just two that leaked from the EFF, and we're not sure why. And we can imagine that there are probably some people, maybe in the DA, maybe in the IFP, maybe in other parties that support Cyril for this exact reason that he gives them money. This is from the EFF. Julius Malimo was not happy about this, but it makes me wonder how many other EFF members has Cyril Ramaphosa given money to? 80,000 rand, no strings attached. That's a pile of bullshit. And again, it was money from his presidency campaign. How much money does Cyril actually have that is given to him for funding? And how much of that money does he use to literally get politicians, maybe business people, maybe even people in the courts to favor him? It's kind of disgusting. This guy really might actually go down as the most corrupt politician. But at the same time, he doesn't do this alone. There are people that accept this money. Probably lawyers, maybe judges, uh, business people and other politicians that are not only in the ANC but elsewhere. Money talks, boy. Anyways, my point was going to be this. Uh, back in 2019, the EFF was collecting close to 430,000 rand a month from charging a levy onto all its uh, party members that were in parliament and other places where they earn salaries, which I think is such a really, really dope idea. We hear so many stories of the ANC struggling to pay salaries at Lutuli House, which is their headquarters, the headquarters of the EFF or the Winnie Mandela, I think, Winnie Matigizela Mandela House. I hope it's called the Winnie Matigizela Mandela House. I love um, acknowledging her maiden name. The Winnie Mandela House of the EFF. Um, the ANC struggles, and I'm just thinking if they were to levy, if they were to add a levy to ANC MPs, they'd have a lot of money. They wouldn't need to go around begging business people for money and have situations like Ramaphosa's bank statements sealed. Um, the ANC, last I checked, charges 10 or 20 rand a year for members, which sadly their members don't even pay. Um, so kudos to the EFF. I think if you have an organization or political party like the EFF, um, I think it's a really noble gesture. It could be 5%, maybe even 10% of your salary and make sure it goes to the party so that you can carry on funding the party for campaigning, to pay for the staff uh, that does admin um, and other very important things so that you don't have to go out begging. And the reality is that the more seats you get, the more salaried politicians you have, the more money you guys can raise as a levy for your political party to grow um, from strength to strength. So to whoever came up with the idea at the EFF, whether it's Julius or Floyd or someone else in the leadership um, or not even in the leadership, kudos. And I hope other political parties will, will take a leaf from that. We see the trade unions in this country that raise millions every month uh, with the money that they levy to their members. And I think if you have a decent organization, I think the levy goes a long way. Some churches do it as well to some of their congregants where the congregants send 1,500 rand a month 
500 rand or a thousand or two thousand rand a month so that the church can can grow and build dope i was in durban uh this week and uh, the shembe church sondola manazareta had a gathering at moses mapita stadium i bumped into some of the members there i saw the leader of uh the atm uh uvuyo zungula was there as well to pay homage i'm not sure if other politicians were there but they literally these guys fill the streets in durban if you've seen the videos so dope so organized the only thing that pains me is churches like isondola manazareta the shembe church churches like the zcc church under lekhanyane are struggling with how organized they are to mobilize their congregants money so that they can build their own institutions i mean i don't see what is stopping the shembe church from building 30 schools in kzn as an example that have an underlying foundation of uh, Isaiah Shembe's teachings in the same way we have Islamic schools in this country in the same way of Christian schools we have Roman Catholic schools we have Jewish schools in this country it would be really dope uh, i know the ZCC church has built a school but i think with the amount of money that they raise and the amount of members that they have they could actually build more schools uh, whether in Limpopo or other parts of South Africa 50 schools i think easily they could build with the teachings of the Zionist Christian Church. Um, and just as people have in their homes, you can have in these churches these huge posters or statues of the church leaders to actually show that they organized. And outside of the schools, of course, building their own banks, whether they are formal or informal banks, where members of the Shembe Church, members of the ZCC Church, do not need to go to APSA, Standard Bank, Net Bank, FNB, Capitec, Time Bank to and loan out money. They can comfortably go to their churches and loan out money for uh, farming activities, for manufacturing businesses, um, for retail businesses. Um, these people could literally, I mean, if you look at Batu Drip, Matosa, Tepo Jeans, they could literally have their own clothing brands. I know their church uniforms, they kind of, I think they supply themselves if they don't import from China, but they could literally create these manufacturing juggernauts. I know a lot of private uh, institutions are very close to the church leaders and they make sure that whether it's a cell phone network, whether it's something I know Patrice Mutip and Time Bank has infiltrated, I think the ZCC church and a couple of other churches. I think it's one of the reasons why he funds buses and stadiums so that these churches can gather because it's probably money that he gives to the church leaders. Uh, but at the same time, um, it's so that there is business that is funneled uh, his way. I know the ZCC church a couple of years ago wanted to build their own banks and stuff. I don't know what happened to that idea. But I know some of these churches have signed up their members to Time Bank. Some of them are linked to cell phone networks, etc., etc. But these institutions are so big. I wish they were organized like the Jews. I wish they were organized like some Christians, some Roman Catholics, um, some Muslims in this country. So that we could actually see the, the power and the strength of black belief systems that have visible structures their own food stores their own retail chains their own big farms like zz2 from the fund sales etc something that would be great to see and a great story to tell anyways um i sat down with gates and mckenzie and i'm not going to speak too much on that um i'm pausing because I'm trying to think of, of <laughs> how to structure what I'm trying to say. I'm not doing a review of the sit down, which I know some people would like me to do a review. I want to say this. Gaten McKenzie, when you sit with him, and this is me trying to be objective. I've said to Tutuzane Zuma, he's a friend and a brother. I appreciate and admire him very much. And I love the fact that he's put his hand up to lead. Not under the ANC, but as an independent candidate. He is saying, I want to be and I will be president of this country. And he's one of the few people doing that himself. People like Gaten McKenzie. I'm not sure if Herman Mashaba is saying, I will be president of the country. I'm not sure. I'm, Cyril Ramaphosa, of course, is president. I'm not sure if the leader of the IFP is doing something like that. I'm not sure if John Stianazen even believes he can be president of the country. But Tutuzane Zuma's done it. Gaten McKenzie is doing it. I'm trying to be objective, but at the same time, I really like Gaten. So there will be some type of a bias. I like Jacob Zuma. I normally try to add this disclaimer that, look, I'm biased. I like the old man. 
We can discuss his politics and debate and speak about potential corruption and some of the things that he did. But just as a timer, as a Zulu man who's very proud of his culture and heritage, who spoke in his Zulu, who sang and danced, and as someone who seemed to be very pro-South African, Gaten McKenzie comes with that. In this country where so many of our leaders are so focused, so obsessed with diplomacy, worrying what America thinks, worrying what Russia and Ukraine think, worrying what China and Japan and Germany think, worrying about what SADC thinks and what the African Union thinks, Gaten McKenzie comes out as a voice saying, I want to put South Africans first. I want to be the president of South Africa. And I want to put South Africans first. It's refreshing. You know the people of Orania put Afrikaners first. The movement of Afri Forum prioritizes Afrikaners and minority groups first. In some of these church groups, in some of these associations, they don't put a specific people first. I mean, if you look at the Black Business Council, they call themselves the Black Business Council. But if you look at their partners, if you go on their website and you look at some of the partners that they have there, you're like, these are not even black-owned businesses. Gates and McKenzie is saying, I will put South Africans first. Black, white, colored, Indian. I'll put them first. There was a gentleman saying, uh, because I was in Durban, he was saying, I don't support Indians. This is an Indian chap in my comments. I don't support Indians, but I support people of Indian descent. And I was asking, what's the difference? It's pretty clear. Indians are from India. The people of Indian descent have ancestors, forefathers, foremothers that come from India. I'm talking about South African Indians who have been here for three, five, seven, ten generations. And some of these people, and that's a conversation we need to have, they don't want to be called Indians anymore. When Dr. Uma Ifatunde sat with me, he was saying, we should call these people American Africans and not African Americans. Because what he was trying to emphasize to him, himself and other people like him is, we are not Americans. We are Africans. When you call me an African American, you are describing the type of American I am. And I'm telling you, I'm not an American, I'm an African. But the type of African I am is an American African. So I'm an African in America, which I think, look, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a nuance, it's semantics to some people, but it's a psychological shift to say, I am not American, I'm African. I happen to be an American African. So this gent was saying, I'm not from India. My parents are not from India. My grandparents are not from India. Like, we don't know India. We've never visited there. We can't speak the languages there. We are South African. So we want to remove this Indian tag because when we travel the world, when we tell people, oh, we are Indians, they're like, oh, we saw your prime minister. You're like, what the fuck are you talking about? And I was asking this gen, like, maybe it's time Indian people in South Africa come up with a new term. We always have the power, guys, to redefine who we are. If you want to be Swati, Zulu, Kosa, you can change. You can be Umtea to Umtea to Umumalu. You can be Omandela. You can be whatever you want, bro. And if you brand and push it hard enough, it can be there. I mean, Isaiah Shem became and literally built his own Christian movement. And uh, tongue in cheek, when I asked him, what did you guys like to be called? He was like, Charos. Call us Charos, bro. Call us Slamos. Um, but I think that would be really dope. I, I challenge people of Indian descent in South Africa. I challenge you guys, some of you, to be like, look, it would be cool if you guys come up with a new term so that in South Africa, when you travel the world, people will know that you are of Indian descent, but you are actually South African. We've got Cape Malays today. And maybe because they're from Malaysia, maybe they can also come up with a new term and be like, guys, we are South African. But we are maybe brown South Africans. Maybe that could be a term for the Indians and be like, oh, you know, you have black South Africans. We are brown South Africans. Oh, you're from India. No, nope. my ancestors, sure. But I'm a brown South African. Just like we have white South Africans. Like, I'm not Indian, bro. I'm not from India. Don't see me shaking my head. Say, um, so I think that was interesting. Sorry, I, I, I went on a tangent. Dr. Uma Ifatunde, the name.
Gayton McKenzie. We don't have a leader that is pro-South Africa. If you look at Nklanta Lux, another guy I'm very biased towards because he's a friend and a brother. He's very passionate about Soweto and Sowetans. He's like, we want to fix Soweto. Like, when you look at Vladimir Putin, he puts Russia first. When you look at Xi Jinping, he puts China first. When you look at Joe Biden, Donald Trump, they put America first. Uh, John Makafuli, may he rest in peace from Tanzania. He put Tanzania first. Robert Mugabe, even speaking to Tony Blair, was saying, my Zimbabwe. 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 Like, Nelson Mandela loves South Africa, but he seemed to be a man of the world. Jacob Zuma, some people would argue, seemed more Zulu than South African. He seemed to prioritize Zulus and black people. Uh, Cyril Ramaphosa, so focused, boy, on his business associates, specifically white, so focused on appeasing Americans, making sure that he's liked at the United Nations and the World Economic Forum. I don't even know if he's got a good relationship at the African Union. Julius Malima does. He's very pro-African Union and pan-Africanism. He wants to be liked by all these people, but it's almost like the guy doesn't give a fuck about South Africans. Dayton McKenzie is saying South Africans first. If there are job opportunities, put South Africans first. I don't care if they are foreigners. Legal foreigners that come here with a permit. If there's a job opportunity, if there's a financial opportunity, give it to a South African because this is who this country is for. It's refreshing rhetoric. On the other side, he wants to get rid of illegal foreigners. He wants them deported. And a lot of people are saying, this guy is xenophobic and that's bullshit, man. There is no African country. There is no African country. Malawi, Mozambique, Zimbabwe, Nigeria, Egypt, Morocco, Tunisia, Sudan. There is no African country that allows illegal people to come into their nation. None. So when those countries, Zimbabwe, Mozambique, Angola, the Democratic Republic of the Congo, when those countries <laughs> let South Africans in, it is because those South Africans have a permit. Yeah, but during apartheid, the countries would let South Af Yes, that was because they welcomed us in. South Africans were in exile because they were under attack in this country. And those countries, Tanzania, Zimbabwe, Lesotho, Eswatini, Angola, they welcomed exiles in. It wasn't South Africans that were jumping borders and forcefully forcing themselves onto those nations. In effect, those South Africans were refugees. And we've got refugees in this country that are recognized. So illegal foreigners are not here by, by invitation. And whether it is Gayton McKenzie, whether it is Herman Mashaba, which he did as mayor of Johannesburg, whether it is Ntlantla Lak's Operation Tutula when he was told Operation Tutula, whether it is Arun Mutsualedi from the ANC and as Home Affairs Minister, there are people that are here in this country uninvited. And if you feel that they are British, some of the Afrikaner people, other people that were here uninvited, that's a conversation we need to have. If you're going to say these people are not invited here, sure. What would you like to see happen? Would you like to send them back to Europe and wherever they came from? Would you like them to pay an extra tax? And let's have the conversation. But in the interim, especially for poor black people that live in squatter camps and in townships, they are saying, we live with these African foreigners that are here. And a lot of them commit crimes because they can't get jobs, but they need to get by. So they commit crimes. Some of them are Zamazamas. They commit crimes. Some of them are Nigerian. They commit crimes. They sell drugs. And they are destroying South Africa. And the people entrusted with keeping law and order and security, the ANC-led government, immigration, uh, the border control, borders that we don't even have. One of the reasons I like AfriForum and I fund AfriForum is because they patrol the borders. Our government is failing and Gaten is saying, we will get rid of illegal foreigners and we need to get rid of them now. Is it politics? Definitely. Is he saying what you want to hear? Of course. Julius Malima does it. Some of these other, Naledi Pando, when she's speaking about foreign policies, she says all the things we want to hear. But it is things that need to be done. And it's refreshing to have a leader who is saying, we will put South Africans first. Russia, Ukraine, Gaten McKenzie says, all of them are part of the USSR, which is actually who supported South Africa or South Africans during apartheid. It wasn't just Russia. It was Russia with Ukraine, with the Czech Republic, with Slovakia, etc. 
the, the, the Soviet Union as a whole. So you're not going to make us pick between these brothers. Oh, do you like Puma or Adidas? Those are two brothers, bro, from Germany. They both started Adidas and then the one decided to branch off and create Puma. Same brothers. Omo and Surf, both under Unilever. Don't come make me pick under one company. But he is saying, what is important for South Africans? America wants to speak about Agoa. Is that important for South Africa? And if it's so, then let us prioritize that. Do we have a good relationship with Russia? Let us prioritize it. And let us be honest. Tell Joe Biden and tell the Americans, guys, we are going to be honest. And this is a shout out to Naledi Pando because she's as clear as daylight. But the Americans, because of their propaganda, will obviously keep bullying or try to bully us. This is our stance on Russia. We are not pro the war or the conflict. And we are not going to be anti-Russia because it suits your economic interests. We won't. We have a good relationship with Russia. You have a bad relationship and that's for you. We are not picking a side. We have a good relationship with America because we have trade agreements and you're one of our big trade partners. But you will not bully us and tell us to pick a side because you guys have an issue. That's rubbish and that's wrong. Yes, we are a smaller, weaker nation, but we disagree to stand on a platform and be like, we'll go with the Americans because they are our big daddy. China was very clear at some point saying to Russia, look, if the West side America comes to China will come and support because we won't let other people come and bully you with your own conflicts and your own issues. South Africa and Zimbabwe have got issues. South Africa and Lesotho, South Africa and Namibia have issues. Now all of a sudden we're asking India to get involved. Now all of a sudden we're asking Canada to get involved. Why? Because it is a neighbor issue. If there's some bullying and whatever, look, we can come and offer our opinions. But we're not going to pick a side because it suits India's agenda for us to get into Zimbabwe because it's got resources. That's malicious. And South Africans need to know this. So Gaten McKenzie emphasizes that South Africa needs to focus on what's important for South Africans. Speaks about the death penalty. Very controversial. And I can understand why so many people have an issue with the death penalty. Number one, our legal system is broken and it's corrupt. We haven't seen justice for Senzo Mehiwa. We have not seen justice for AKA and Tibbs. We have not seen justice for so many other people in this country. We've got a Cyril Ramaphosa who rushes to Poland, to Russia, to Ukraine. He's always there with the peace agreements. But he struggles to go to the Western Cape and deal with the violence in the Cape Flats. And we see him sitting with the gang leaders. As the president of this country, who's supposed to put South Africans first, sit with the gang leaders and be like, guys, can we stop the violence? What is the issue here? And if the gang leaders say, look, my man, we can't stop the drugs because we need to eat and we need to make money. And Cyril and other political leaders, including the leaders of the Western Cape, the Premier, the Mayor of Cape Town, Jordan Hill Lewis, let them sit, Alan Wendy, I think is the Premier, let them sit with the gangs and be like, guys, we would like you to stop drugs, but we know you're trying to make money. So how we'll help you is for some of the gang leaders, we will give you some of the tenders. Maybe the security tenders, we'll give you some of the cleaning tenders, we'll give you whatever, we'll give you some of the tenders, and maybe we'll give you, just like BEE, we'll give you shares in certain companies so that you guys can carry on living lavish, but so that the violence can stop and so that we stop destroying our communities with drugs. That is real leadership. And you get Cyril to sit with the leaders of the taxi associations. Kenny Gunane did it uh, recently in Soweto when there were Ubers, Bolts burnt. And the sad outcomes of that was that the Ubers and Bolts won't work there for weeks it's like you guys are also being bullied by the taxi industry that's not leadership kenny kenny is under the patriotic alliance of gaten by the way you guys are letting the taxi association basically dictate real leadership you want to go to russia and ukraine there's wars here boy sit with the taxi industries and tell them guys the roads don't belong to you and if you don't agree that the roads belong to you let's have a conversation do you guys want to own roads and if you want to own roads then sure if you want to own roads, then you must build those roads. You must maintain those roads. Otherwise, you can't just come tell us this is our road. You can't just have a route here. This is a public road. And if a taxi or a bus or a train or private individuals want to operate here, they should operate. And if you have an issue with that, let's have a conversation. And if you want to dominate and monopolize the roads, then you must maintain the roads and you must pay everyone else so that they can't compete. And it must be fair. That's leadership, boy. That's the type of conversations we need to be having. But we're not having those conversations. We've got leaders that 
trying to appease the whole world. Those Cyril are busy hosting people from Uganda to discuss Angola cattle. If there's a president who's probably never put South Africa first, it's Cyril. Tabombegi loved South Africa and he loved Africa. He was a pan-Africanist leader. Even to this day, I've criticized Itaima so much. He cared. But the one thing is he genuinely cared about us and our economy. He prioritized white business a lot, but he cared about this country working. Now you've got Cyril and these guys. Gaten is trying to say, let us put South Africans first. And the nice thing is got the ear of white capital. They seem to like him. But he also holds them to account. He says, you guys love having foreigners here because you underpay them. A lot of them are undocumented, so you can exploit them because they can't hide behind the labor laws and they can't join a trade union. So you guys are being malicious. Uh, Helen Sussman said, Helen Sussman Foundation, these foundations that are no human rights, it's not human rights, it's because they're trying to protect economic interests. And we have to hold them to account. Rich white business people, rich Indian business people, rich black business people, you guys can't have your bread buttered both sides. You guys want to exploit illegal foreigners here, but then when black South Africans are complaining about jobs, when black South Africans have no choice but to commit crimes, you're the first to complain. Oh, they broke into my shop. They broke into your shop because you're hiring foreigners, bro. Where do you expect black South Africans to get jobs if you want to hire them? But you want to get all the tax benefits. You want to get all the protections. Doesn't work that way. You need to come to the table. You need to have a conversation. Let us look at your employees. Cyril Ramaphosa at uh, Palapala had Namibians working for him. How does he have Namibians working for him? Are they even documented? Our own president could be hiring foreigners. These are the hard conversations we should be having as a country, but we don't have the brave, robust leadership that is willing to have that. And that's willing to bring South Africans in and say, guys, we cannot carry on allowing this. You guys are going to vote for the ANC, but if you look at ANC leaders and their business friends, they all hire foreigners. Luto Baba. Something has to give. But those are my thoughts, I think, around Gaten and uh, some of his utterings. The death penalty is, is sensitive because... Our legal system is not ready for it. Our criminal justice system is, is, is broken. So for that reason, I cannot support the death penalty right now. What I can support is an aggressive overhaul of our criminal justice system, of our legal systems, um, of the police. We need to have police that are trained. Some of the fattest, <laughs> fattest people in this country are wearing police officers' uniform. It is, it is embarrassing and disgusting. Now, when you speak about prejudice, I'm happy to be prejudiced in the police and the soldiers. Our police and our soldiers need to be eating good food. They need to be eating meat, good vegetables. They need to be built like soldiers and like the police. And all of them need to be gymming every week. If you see a, a person that's well built, you should be like, is this person a cop or a soldier? Because he's built like. Our rugby players, I remember B.S. Rube, I think killed. It's either a traffic cop or a police officer. It was a very sad, controversial case. Blue Bulls rugby player. Our rugby players can moor most of our cops because our cops are these scrawny little people or they're these girls. You know, I was in, uh, I was in Davidson uh, at an event there. We were doing some, some youth work there with the um, Meshach Tabudi Foundation and Buisan. Uh, really amazing charity initiatives that are run there. And there's this van, police van that came through, I think just to observe and Hey, boy, the honeys that came out there. Beautiful, beautiful young ladies. Hair done. I think one had a weave. They had these beautiful earrings. Their lips were glistening. Their skin, their eyelashes were done. Their eyebrows on fleek. I think today we, we no longer use fleek. They were snatched. Their eyebrows were snatched. Their nails, boy, were glistening. And their uniform looked stunning. But these are our cops. Now, I look at these young girls and I'm like, if someone's coming to shoot me, if there's crime here, do I genuinely trust these girls? Girls, young girls, to protect me? Fuck no. Zero. These girls should not be in the police service. Maybe they can do admin. They can be there in the police, typing up, answering calls. Hi, how, you know, like 911 in America. Hi, how may we help you? Oh, there's a crime. And then, you know, with their nice prettiness, like, you know, I work for the South African police. You're like, oh, you're admin. I can, you can't be in the streets, boy. Because when some of these motherfuckers out there have got guns, some of these guys are coming to kill. You can't expect those girls. Pretty young girls, shame. Then Kono Mama, big booty. 
<laughs> BBWs. Big booty old ladies are there. Traffic cops and what what. Yeah, how can we help you? You're like, you can't be a cop. So we need an overhaul of our police, of our soldiers. We need an overhaul of our legal system. Our courts, which I've had the displeasure of being exposed to, are horrible. Some of our clerks in our courts don't even know the law. I, I apologize if this guy watches my content, but I was in a court. I'm not going to mention which court it is, but in Gauteng. And I was speaking to this guy about marriage and divorce and parent co-parenting. And this guy was saying he's planning to get married. He's a clerk in the court. And I asked him why he wants to get married. And he was like, no, I want my children to have my surname. And I was like, what do you mean? He's like, no, Baba, you, your children can't have your surname unless you're married. I cringed. I kept quiet and I just kept my opinions to myself. There is no such thing, guys, in the law. If you guys believe that, that's rubbish. If you're a man, your children can take your surname if you and the mother agree. Full stop. On the unabridged birth certificate, you will have the mother's details, you will have the father's details. And you can choose the surname of the child and you can even have a double barrel surname if that's what you guys are into. You do not have to marry the mother of your children for your children to take your surname. And this was a clerk of the court. I had a fight once with a magistrate in KZN who was asking me about certain cultural practices. And I was explaining, that's tribal court. We in a Roman Dutch, we're under a Roman Dutch law. We cannot be dealing with some of those things. So some of our, our lawyers, I mean, this is why we're senior advocate Dalim Bofu. This is why some of them uh, bully the judges. Because some of the judges don't know uh, their work. Sorry. Uh, I just need to respond to something quickly. Sorry, I'm still here. But some of the clerks, some of the lawyers, some of the judges don't even know the law. And lawyers, judges, magistrates seem to be in this racket where... They don't want to apply the law. They, order, they don't want to apply themselves. So they just want people to go and pay exorbitant amounts of monies for lawyers. So that they can bully people. It's, it's absolute garbage and it's rubbish. So. Uh, I, I think we need an overhaul. I think we need to change some of those things. Uh, Anyways, I think that's sorted. So I wanted to raise that around Gates and McKenzie. I hope we get more leaders that are passionate and patriotic. Mandi Samashekho is a huge patriot. It's the reason why she was attacking Unisa. Unisa threatened to sue her. A few weeks later, uh, stories are coming out around the scandals at Unisa. Mandi Samashekho is vindicated. <laughs> and people are not talking about it. And your Minister of Higher Education, Bladen Zimande, Dr. Bladen Zimande, is dead quiet. These are the leaders that we have. And other people that are leaders in education are not saying anything. They're all turning a blind eye. It's almost as if they are, they are captured themselves. But please go and check out that uh, sit down with Gaten McKenzie. I'd like to hear some of your thoughts around that. Um, drop some of your comments below. Drop some of your comments there. Um, I think it's very important. Shout out to Nklantla Lux. I'm hoping to see more young leaders, male, female, black, white, colored, doesn't matter, that are putting up their hands to lead. Shout out to Ian Cameron. Ian Cameron is literally doing the work of a police minister in this country. Every day, every week, he's uh, announcing people that have been killed. They were made their rest in peace. Cops that were killed in the Cape Flats over the past couple of weeks, which is very, very tragic. Uh, I'm assuming it's good police that were trying to do their job and that were gunned down. Beggy Kale has got nothing on Ian Cameron. If Ian Cameron had a budget and had a mandate, the guy would be doing amazing work in this country uh, under the police. We need more leaders like him. Um, we'd like to see and Tlantla Lux and Alex, I'd like to see Ian Cameron, uh, Imlazi Wamashu, you know, Chris Papas is doing the Lord's work in Umgeni district, uh, in KZN. Uh, we need people who are going to put their hands up. I mean, who are the leaders of the Cape Flats that are going to ra raise their hands up and be like, guys, you know, I, I, I'm here. I want to lead. I want to sit with the gang leaders and make them my friends and be like, guys, I understand you're trying to make money. I understand you're trying to feed your families. 
how can we work together to build better schools to make a greater space so that things can be better you know let's put away the mafia movies let's put away the numbers and all those things how do we come together and build a better country and how can we get you guys to lead here and tell a beautiful story of how the gang leaders in the western cape in the cape flats they some of them came together and we cut you all your own little space if this is your territory this is going to be yours and everyone's going to know you're going to be the leader here and now that you're the leader here please make sure you're looking after the schools make sure that we're putting the community to work and let's hold some of these rich white people in the western cape accountable guys pump some money to this gang leader here to make sure that this place functions and this person will then supply employees to your businesses and those employees will pay tax which benefits these areas and get these gang leaders to be the ones that get the drugs out, but to not lose their privilege so that they make their money. Because that's all it's about at the end of the day. It's about making money. You can't tell them to stop selling drugs, but you're not going to replace something. That means you're not serious as well about, about ridding the scourge. Places like Westbury, you know, Lanasia, uh, Aldos, Eldorado Park, Reiche Park. Get some of the leaders to put their hands up and be like, guys, we're not fighting with the gang leaders. We understand that the guys have territories. We understand that the guys are trying to make money. How can we help the guys make money in a cleaner way? And let's sit down with them. Let's workshop them. Let's get them involved. Taxi industry the same. Sit with the taxi industry and have robust conversations with the elders and with the young kids, their children. And be like, guys, we want to revolutionize taxis. If you go to take these guys, travel with them to China, to Japan, South Korea, let them look at the trains and how they operate and be like, we want to help you guys own the train, fast train networks in South Africa. How can we help you guys do that? And you'll make your money. Yes, we'll tax you, but you'll still make the amount of money you're making. But what we have now is we have like a private sector that doesn't want to share. And when there's crime, they turn up blind eyes if they're not responsible. They're responsible. It's our government that brought in the Ubers and the Bolts that are causing the conflict with the meter taxis and the taxi industry. Because they don't want to have robust conversations and those are some of the things that people like myself i'd be very happy to sit sit with yo i'd love to sit to dumanda kaba it's one of my wishes to sit to dumanda kaba who is the head of the kaba empire in kzn speak to him though about the buses about the taxis i understand that these things are complex i fully understand but the conversation needs to be had had and if the conversation ends with we will not tax you if the conversation ends with look let's share certain things here so be it but let it be formalized and let's have the conversation. It can't be that we constantly have crime and killings when some of these things can be resolved with dialogue. Ophiel and Banula failed as Minister of Transport. And I know these things are complicated. But we need to have the chat. We need to have a taxi expo. We have all these expos at Santon Convention Center, at the ICC in Durban, at the Convention Center in Cape Town. When are we having a taxi convention where people are... You know, we've got Inampu, which is an agricultural... A uh, fair, beautiful fair where the wealthiest farmers in the country come with their private planes and their helicopters. Why are we not having that for the taxi industry? Where you bring the latest quantums and whatever. These are the innovations in the taxi industry. And we get the leaders, Oman Jakab and other big families that come and speak about the industry, their struggles. Bring the leaders from SA Taxi. Speak to them about tax. Have a robust conversation. Guys, we want to tax you. But if we're not going to tax you, how do you give us fair value? How do we get you plugged into the busing system? How do we get you plugged into the railway system? Let's have robust, con but we don't want to have that because there are people that are greedy and stingy that don't want to share. They want to keep the trucks to themselves. They want to keep the trains to themselves. And then we have this mess that we have as a nation. It's very sad for me. But anyways, all of us need to rise. And I think for me in particular, I'm getting to a point where I realize that um, I've got a lot of work to do as a, as a young leader. Ah, my phone's died now. I had notes. What else do I want to speak about? I wanted to speak about YouTube very briefly. Uh, this is just a complaint from my side. I don't know. Maybe I need to find out if we have a YouTube South Africa office. If we have a YouTube South Africa office, it needs to bring some of us to sit. Some of us who are content creators to have a conversation about making YouTube more fair for content creators outside of america let me try and explain it as simply as i can oh my battery is down okay i'm gonna need to go charge i'm gonna try and explain this as as basically as possible i just want to see if i can see some of my notes before this phone dies again i'm gonna speak about youtube 
Allow me, allow me, allow me, allow me, boy, before you die. Allow me, allow me. Who to buy from and why? YouTube, EFF, I've spoken about. Okay, I think that's about all. Who to buy from and why? I must remember that buying local. And then YouTube underpays us. Okay. You can die a good death, boy. You've served your purpose. YouTube is an American platform. And it is not the only one. We have got Twitter, which is now owned by Elon Musk. I think the company is called X now. They've got a new CEO. Shout out to them. <laughs> I saw Elon Musk and Mark Zuckerberg want to have a little punch up. I think they're just messing around. But uh, Mark Zuckerberg is currently training in Jiu Jitsu. I know Mr. Beast, who's arguably the biggest YouTuber in the world, is also putting in work in the gym. It's advice for so many of us. As a panelist, one of my principles is healthy living. Guys, gym, take care of your body and your health. Some of your favorite billionaires are putting in work in the gym. YouTube, Twitter, Mark Zuckerberg owns Meta, Meta, Facebook, WhatsApp, Instagram, amongst others. These are American platforms and shout out to them for being able to build those. And I know Americans are very patriotic and they try to build America to become as big as possible. But if there's a YouTube South Africa, we need to have a, a, a genuine conversation, guys. Um, we need fairness. Number one, Meta and Mark Zuckerberg is a very serious pain point for me. Besides the fact that they've throttled my content um, now, I'm blacklisted on Facebook. My content doesn't have a reach. My Instagram, I think, is throttled to some degree as well. But if there's a Facebook South Africa, if there's an Instagram South Africa, guys, let's have a sit down and a talk because we help you guys make a lot of money. And we need to have a conversation around how can you make sure that we get what's fair? We will not be paid like Americans because, of course, it's their company and they want to make money for themselves. But if you look at this platform of YouTube, which is the one that I make money from, at least from an online perspective. YouTube has a platform and in South Africa, they get South African companies to come and market on their platform. So it's South African money going to an American platform. And then on that platform, we as South African content creators create content, which a lot of that content gets mostly distributed in South Africa, maybe to SADC and a few other places, a little bit to the international market, but mostly here. South African companies market on a, an American platform. South African content creators create content for, on this American platform. And then the money literally gets shared a little bit with us. And then the bulk of it goes to America. The Americans, the YouTubes, the Facebooks, the Twitters, they get to keep a chunk of that money. That it comes from South African companies in South African content creation work very importantly now when the american content creators make content youtube in america floods south africa africa asia europe with american content so that we are forced to watch the joe rogans the lex friedmans the mr beasts we are forced because the algorithms pump their content here now when they pump their content here again South African companies advertise during that time and we watch. And when we watch a chunk of that money, South African advertising money goes to the American content creators and to the American platforms. The money that they get paid for views is much higher than ours. We will be watching the same stuff, the same American, the same South African ads, but the American content creators get a bigger chunk of that money than us. Even though it's for the same view. I, I need you to process this. You will watch the Joe Rogan experience. Or Mr. Beast. You will watch an ad of a Unilever, Tiger Brands, Pioneer Foods. You will watch a South African ad. And that South African company paid YouTube for that ad to be placed. While you're watching the Joe Rogan experience and Mr. Beast. And that money for that ad that you are watching as a South African goes to Joe Rogan, goes to Mr. Beast, and goes to YouTube America. Obviously, the South African company gets to advertise to us, but that money goes there. The money that Joe Rogan makes is higher, much higher than the money that I make when you as a South African watch my video on the same YouTube, advertised by the same Tiger Brands, Unilever, Pioneer Foods, doesn't matter. The same when you watch, you just watched Joe Rogan. And let's say for, I'm um, to use a simple example. One dollar goes to Joe Rogan. 
When you watch, you just watch Joe Rogan, a dollar goes to him. When you watch the Penwell show, Penwell the Black Pen, instead of getting a fair dollar that was paid, I'm going to get maybe like 20 cents on the dollar. We get paid much less and that is not fair. So South African marketing to a South African audience, yes, on an American platform, which already takes some of the money. But we need to have a conversation about being more fair to the content creators. TikTok has created a creator's fund. TikTok is Chinese, I believe. They've created a creator's fund and the Americans are making money. The South Africans currently are not. And the question becomes, how do we have these conversations to get what is fair for us? And if it's not going to be fair, unfortunately, we are going to have to <laughs> unionize. We are going to have to organize ourselves and say, guys, this is not fair. YouTube America, you guys need to consider us and do what's fair because we are creating content just like these other guys. You can pay your Americans a bit more. You can pay your UK guys, your European guys. It's fine. And it makes sense if you're paying them based on Europeans advertising in Euro. It makes sense if Americans are advertising in American dollars. But when you've got South African companies paying in rands, but paying more to American content creators than us, that is no longer fair. That needs to be discussed, number one. Number two, the algorithms. Yes, you're a patriotic American. Yes, you're a patriotic Chinese brand. But we would like to have reach in your spaces. And if you're telling us, look, our algorithm, teach us how the algorithms work so that we can come there. If it means we travel to China and host talks and host events so that the Chinese market get to know us, so be it. If we have to come to America as maybe 20 content creators and we travel and we meet with Mr. Beast and we meet with Joe Rogan and Lex Friedman and we create relationships, so be it. We are willing to do that. But let us come and expose ourselves to your markets because your algorithms forces our content. Like we don't want to know about American politics. We want to know about African politics because that affects us. But you guys don't care. You want us to worry about what Joe Biden thought about. We don't care about Joe Biden. We care about what's happening in Angola. We care about what's happening in the DRC, what's happening in Kenya, in Ethiopia. But you guys don't share that information. We are an American platform. We understand. And other people would argue, well, create your own. Sure. If we can organize ourselves and we realize these guys are not fair, those guys are not fair, those guys are not fair, then at some point we're going to be like, let us create our own platforms and let us be patriotic. And then let us co-opt our governments and tell them we will not pay tax. We will not support you. We will not vote for you. And we will get all our fans and our followers as influencers, as content creators to not vote for you because you refuse to block YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Rumble, whatever platform, Patreon. Because you guys don't want to prioritize us, we will make sure we don't prioritize you as well because Xi Jinping and China don't allow Google products there. They're not allowed. Facebook meta products are not allowed there. Yes, you can have, get VPN and then pretend you're in another location. But you're not doing it under Chinese jurisdiction. Those are some of the things Donald Trump was trying to fight. Like, why won't China let us be there, but they want to be here? We're supporting a TikTok here, but they won't support a Google and a Facebook there. It's a conversation. And as small as we are, we can do it. We can revive, mix it. And we can sit with the guys at Naspers. We can sit with some of the guys at Vodacom. Some of the guys at Vodacom have tried to build their own Spotify. They've tried to speak to, it, to me. I'm guessing they've probably spoken to other content creators. And the conversation needs to be robust. Let us sit in a room and let us explain what will allow us and what will push us to push local. Otherwise, if we're not meeting halfway, then what's the point? We will carry on with the American and the Chinese and the European platforms until you guys are like, if you're going to say you're proudly South African, prove it. Show that you care about us and let us do the same. Otherwise, we're not having a conversation because you guys are going to pray, take our profits as Vodacom, send them to Vodafone in the UK, then we're clearly working for the British. You're going to claim that this is a proudly South African company, but then we realize it's actually owned by Germans. What is the point? We need to have a conversation. YouTube underpays us as content creators in South Africa. And it's not just YouTube. It's a lot of these other platforms. Mark Zuckerberg and Meta need to catch a wake up because Facebook, Instagram, are making a lot of advertising money, but they are not willing to share it with content creators. And it's very upsetting. Spotify and all these guys have actually respected us. Yes, they're not paying us the most, but they are trying. And shout out to YouTube, man, which is actually a Google platform for actually sharing with us. It means everything. Some of us get to feed our families because of the platforms. 
And it's a conversation once raised. The SAPC is the multi-choices. You guys need to start paying people what's fair. Last year, myself and DJ Spoo sat with JJ Dabani on the Hustlers Corner. And the news channels were running with a clip of JJ Dabani accusing Tito Mboweni, Trevor Manuel, etc. as being part of the people that led to the formation of COPE. They were using our content and they were not paying us. Now, if you're watching this on SAPC or on ENCA, on Newsroom Africa and other such platforms, those platforms want you to watch there. And while you're watching, they sell ads and they make money on those ads and they pay their production teams. They pay their news anchors. They pay everyone, but they don't pay us for our content. We need to have that conversation. Another very sensitive conversation, which a lot of content creators are not ready to have because you know, it's always nice to exploit people. Oh, it's always nice to exploit people. We need to have a conversation about paying guests. If you're going to be bringing Gaten McKenzie, if you're going to be bringing Klantla Lux, if you're going to be bringing Dr. Uma Ifatunde, if you're going to be bringing uh, Nicolette Mashile, if you're going to be bringing Mandisa Mashiro, if you're going to be bringing a young unknown kid to a platform and they help you make content that makes you money, we need to have a conversation about paying what's fair. Because if I'm going to have a sit down with someone and that interview goes berserk and I end up making 50,000 rand for a sit down, it would be nice to send 5,000 rand because I've got production costs, of course, the team, the marketing we do, myself, etc., the equipment. But to say, look, this is how much we budgeted for your sit down. Maybe we thought we'd make 5,000 rand and we were willing to feed you, transport you. But since it's gone beyond, can call it a form of royalties. I'd like to pay you a little bit of money and say thank you. Number one, you helped us make money, which is only fair. Number two, it's to incentivize you to say, look, next time you can actually come back and be like, you know, those guys once paid me because I helped them make money. That's what's fair. It's fair value exchange. Another penalism principle. Fair value exchange and not just exploiting people. Let me call the, the guys that help my content trend, but I never share anything with them. I pay them in exposure. If I'm not going to pay you in money, then let me be like, look, bro, um, I'm not going to pay you in money. But to thank you, is there a product that you sell? Is there a service that you offer? I'd like to market it on my platforms as a way to say thank you. And if I can help you make money by coming on my platform, you're like, yo, Penn, I'd really love to come on your platform again. You help boost sales. Or oh, I want to come and promote a book. That's fair value exchange. And I think... Uh, in closing on this topic, um, I'm going to make a, a, a TikTok video short about this as well. As we start getting closer to election season in South Africa, I urge a lot of the political parties, in particular the African National Congress, the, a the ANC, the Democratic Alliance, the DA, uh, the Patriotic Alliance, the PA, Action South Africa, Action SA, Inkata Freedom Party, the IFP, uh, the Freedom Front Plus, uh, the FF or the VF, um, ATM, I think it's the Afri African Transformation Movement. Um, who am I forgetting? The Economic Freedom Fighters, the EFF, uh, ACDP, which is the Christian Democratic Party, I think. Uh, I think. I stand to African Christian Democratic Party. I stand to be corrected. Um, good Party, I can think of off the top of my head. COPE, the Congress of the People. Ahang, uh, which was started by Dr. Ram Rampele, Mampele Rampele. Mampela um, Rampele, and any of the other political parties, uh, and even the new ones. I know Soweto has started its own party, Osonga Zozibi have started their own political parties, Sandi Leshezi, uh, they've started their own political party as well, um, and even the independent candidates, people like Duduzane Zuma, and anyone else who wants to run as an independent. Guys, please use our platforms. Um, people like myself, I can imagine Dr. Sizu Mpofu Walsh, Nkululeg Onkeu, um, maybe people like DJ Spoo in the Hustlers Corner, um, which other platforms are out there. Shout out to Kokos Koteni, <laughs> gossip, but Kokos Koteni, people like Musa Kaula, people that have platforms that people watch. Of course, Podcast and Chill with Mac G and Sol. Um, and some of the other platforms, I'm, I'm going to apologize if I'm not mentioning them. Guys, use our platforms. Come and sit. We are alternative media. There's mainstream and then there's us. We have the ears of some of the people, especially young people. Come onto our platforms. Come and tell your story. Allow us to ask questions. Allow us to engage. And shout out to Mac G for having a Youth Day special where he had youth leaders from the ANC, the DA, 
and I think the EFF, I stand to be corrected, use our platforms, come and have conversations and, and engage young people, but then bring money. You guys have got budgets for political campaigning, and it's not a lot to ask you guys to actually contribute. Be like, you know, uh, let's contribute to these guys. We'd like to come on your platform. We're not a big party. We've got a small budget, but we'll give you guys 5,000 rand. We'll give you guys 10,000 rand. Give you guys 20,000, 30,000, 50,000. Some of the bigger parties, ANC, DA, EFF, have bigger budgets. And you're like, look, Penn, uh, we'd like to bring maybe five ministers or senior leaders. We'd like to bring five for conversations there. We'd like to speak foreign relations. We'd like to speak home affairs and immigration. We'd like to speak these things. And we'd like to set a budget of 10,000 rand for each, 50,000, so that they can come. And Ask all the questions that young people want to want to know. Go on social media and encourage young people to maybe send questions through. Ask the questions and more importantly, tell us what is going to make young people register to vote. What is going to make young people go and vote. And most importantly for the party or the candidate, what is going to make people vote for me or for us? And then we have an engagement and we use these platforms responsibly. And then ask us the tough questions. What have you guys done since... The last elections what projects are you guys busy with what are you guys doing to make sure young people have jobs what are you guys what is your stance on illegal foreigners what is your stance on maybe russia and ukraine since it's trending what are your thoughts on tabo best that dr nandi pamakutumane and our 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 criminal justice system aka and tibs um senzo meiwa these are the things young people want to hear about what are your thoughts on the internet and getting free wi-fi what are your thoughts on schooling and an overhaul of the schooling system because we need more practical education. Farming, manufacturing, mining, retail. What are you guys doing for the online content creation space? How is NASPERS, MultiChoice, the SABC, and other platforms reaching out to online content creators to create space for them to, you know, maybe you say the panel show is actually powered by the SABC. The SABC is pumped some money. The SABC markets the panel show on its platforms and there's a symbiotic relationship. And the SAPC says, look for the controversial stuff. We are captured by the BCCSA. But if you want to guys get, want to get the shit, fuck motherfuckers, this is bullshit. These are the alternative platforms that we invest in. Maybe get some of the political parties to say, look, we fund some of these platforms. And yes, they're going to have a bias towards us. But, you know, panel says before every engagement, guys, you know, I am funded by the DA. I am funded by the EFF. I am. So... We will bring other people on, but please know that we are very pro this party or this candidate. That's how you build trust and transparency. And people are like, look, this guy is dropping truths, even though we know he is funded by these people. I've been asked many times if I'm funded by Rob Hersoff, and I've answered many times that I'm not. I've even made videos to explain why not and what would make me even take money from Rob Hersoff and other people. People come and bash me for 30,000 Rand. And it's like, you guys didn't go and dig up bank statements. Or unlock like civil Ramaphosa statements. I told you, Rob and Katie Hersoff donated 30,000 Rand to the work I'm doing. And Rob Hersoff is not the only one. DJ who has pumped tens of thousands of Rands into the work that I'm doing. People like Kulufelo Maponya has pumped money in my direction. People like Siabule Langanga has pumped money in my direction. People like Lise Homudise has pumped money in my direction. My own mother, Umam Sitansile Alina Mloch, has put hundreds of thousands of rands in the work that I'm doing. My brother does work with me. Other unknowns give me money. The people that pay 100 rand, 200 rand a month on my channels are pumping money in my direction. But because people's minds are inferior and captured, oh, Rob Hersoff has captured pain. No, bro. Rob is my mate. So is Ntlanta Lux. So is Tutuzane Zuma. So is Ian Cameron. So is Gaten McKenzie. I'm open about that. It's not something you dug up that was hidden. We saw Penel sitting in a dark corner. I told you that. You saw me sitting with the bloke. But now you want to act like it's some funny intel. Nah. But we need to have these open, transparent conversations so that you guys know what's happening. It's important if we want to build a better country, if we want to build a better continent. Africa's up for grabs and some of us must put our hands up and say, we want to run Africa. And if the United States of America, if Mexico or Canada, if South America as a whole, if Eastern and Western Asia, if Russia and the rest of Europe and the United Kingdom, 
if Australasia, the Polynesian islands, if they want to come onto the African continent, they must speak to the right people. And when they speak to us, we must have a fair value conversation. We're in 2023, you can't still be coming to just milk our resources and we keep quiet. You can't keep coming to put up military bases and we keep quiet. You can't keep coming to pump money into our political leaders and then we keep quiet. We are aware of what's happening in the world and we want to have better conversations with you. And you guys must start respecting us as human beings. We want to build a better world, but you must see us as human and not see us just as these commodities and resources you can chew up and spit out. We need to stop that. We're not trying to destroy you. We know America's great. Australia's great. China's great. Japan, South Korea, India, Germany, Spain, France are oh, amazing. We appreciate you, but take us seriously. We're trying to build Africa. And if you're serious about us, help us build Africa. And if you do, we'll make space for you. There's so much land on this continent. We'll make space for you. Come to South Africa. We'll cut you pieces of land. Like a piece of land was cut for the, the Sheikh of the United Arab Emirates. Come cut a piece of land. But let's be open and transparent about what the fuck you're coming to do here. Because if it's not going to be benefiting our people, we'd like you to please leave with all due respect. Because we're tired of people coming here to loot and then go and enrich their spaces and they don't give back to us. Very importantly. My last point, I've been speaking for quite a while. I'm going to keep it short. Penalism principle, which is community. Guys, we can vote. We can turn purple in the face getting you guys to register to vote, to sign up. By the way, to the IEC, to the guys that vote for change and all these other people out there, Dr. Michael Louis, an amazing, amazing patriot of South Africa. Guys, please put some money together. Put money together because people like myself, I can imagine so many other people and we don't, not going to make it cheesy. Hi guys, please register to vote. It is the right thing to do. Be a South African. Nah, fuck that. Um, we really like as many South Africans as possible to vote, to register to vote. I'm willing to travel around the entire country to go to squatter camps, to go to townships. But you guys must pay for our transport, pay for our accommodation, pay for our food, pay for our crews because we're going to be filming and recording the stuff to get as many people as possible to sign up. I know the ANC, the DA, maybe the EFF and others, they don't like the idea of getting people to register to vote because some of them won't vote for them. They like the status quo. But we need South Africans to get involved and we need them to understand why it's important to get involved. Voting is but one part. To me, one part. But we need people to vote so that we can say South Africans have made their choice and it is informed because Penel is aggressive with the political education, the political literacy. That's one part. The second part, or one of the more important parts is labor. Who are you working for? Because if you work for a German company in South Africa, you're working for Germany. If you're working for KFC, McDonald's, Nike, YouTube, Facebook in South Africa, you're working, like I said, we're creating content here, but the money is going to America. It's going to China. Who you work for is very important. And we need to have conversations. And if we're working for foreign national companies here, are those companies paying fair tax that go into building our communities? Are those companies doing enough to help our communities get better, offering bursaries, scholarships, allowing some of our people in townships, in squatter camps, even in suburbia, to travel to Germany, to Spain, to France, to Switzerland, uh, to the United Kingdom, Scotland, Ireland, Wales, England, traveling to America to be like, we want to do skills, knowledge sharing, to China, Guangzhou, Shenzhen, Beijing, Shanghai, Seoul in South Korea, Tokyo in Japan, Visit Taiwan and be like, we're actually doing something worthwhile here. Otherwise, you are laboring for other nations. And then the important one, community, is who you buy from. It is becoming more important that we become more conscious, especially as South Africans, of who are we buying from. Because we are destroying our own jobs and our own industries because we are buying from a Netflix, from an Amazon Prime, instead of consuming DSTV aggressively so which tells south african stories and employs south africans we are consuming cnn and fox and bbc and al jazeera instead of our own sapc enca newsroom africa and others we are consuming international political online content instead of focusing on penuel the black pen the penal show the hustlers corner kuleg on culture smwx podcast and show etc etc 
think that's very, very important. Those are conversations we need to have. Who are you buying from? And once you have bought from Pen, once you are a paying member on the Penal Show on Penuel the Black Pen, you need to ask this question, Pen, I see we are paying money. Number one, I'm paying because you educate me, you liberate my mind, etc. I appreciate you, inspire me. So I'm willing to pay for that. But I'm paying a bit extra. And I'd like to know what are you doing with this money? Because I'd like you to invest in our communities. I'd like to hear that Penol and Penolism have started or invested in a community garden somewhere. And there's a community gardening project that you're investing, either yourself or you partner with people. Maybe with Afri Forum, maybe with the gift of the givers. Are you guys running community gardens? Maybe with Action Society of Ian Cameron. How do we make sure that we have neighborhood patrols in Deep Sluit, uh, neighborhood patrols in Leondale, neighborhood patrols in Foslora, Sekatle Home, neighborhood patrols in Matate, Nosizwin, neighborhood patrols in Bali, you know, neighbor patrol in Godini, you know, Vitrafir, Kwanyamazan. Those places, how do we ensure that you, you invest in some of those things, Pen? How do you invest in local uh, manufacturing spaces, local clothing? Let's stop wearing Michael Kors like the Minister of Education, uh, Minister of Electricity, Usputla. Let's wear bar to drip Makosa, Sepo jeans, and after we buy from them, be like bar to drip. Outside of jobs, what are you guys doing to reinvest in our communities? Please, can you build factories in our townships? Please, can you build, like, let's hold each other accountable. I think that's fundamentally important. So, that's me. One of the projects that I want to take on, and I'm, I'm saying this now proudly and openly, and I hope other people come through. I need to reinvest in the schools that I went to. I need to reinvest in the communities I went to. It doesn't have to be for long. It can be for a short period. And then I focus my energy on Joburg, which is where I'm based. But um, if Peter Pan, Daycare and Crash is still alive. Um, Chemsford Primary School in Fairley in Newcastle, colored area. Um, Arbor Park Primary in Arbor Park in Newcastle. Newcastle Junior Primary, Busy Bee. Newcastle Senior Primary, Newcastle High School. These are the schools I went to. And hopefully it will spread out to some of the other schools I didn't go to, our competitor schools. Hutton Park Primary, where my sister went. Um, Suryaville. Um, schools like St. Oswald's, Ferrum, High, of course. Uh, Amachuba, High, Lincoln Heights. Some of the schools at Lokshin, like Salanati, where my mom went to, was teaching. Um, Madada. Uh, those kind of schools. Um, my tertiary institutions, Rhodes University, Amakanda, and Grahamstown in the Eastern Cape, the University of Johannesburg, in particular, the Kingsway campus. How do I give back to the choirs, to the rugby teams, to the sports teams? And how do I get so many other scholars? Because this is a culture that I learned from white people in this country. This old boys, alumni, those cultures. And how do we contribute? And shout out to Woolworths. Maybe I should become an ambassador of Woolworths with their My School project. And get more schools to sign up and be like, get people to buy from Woolworths, ShopRite, Pick and Pay, and hold these businesses accountable to be like, if I went to the school, can you sign my school up? And every time I swipe my rewards, can my rewards please go to my school so that my school can feed kids, can offer bursaries and scholarships and can build infrastructure. The technology is there. We just need to get organized and make sure that it flows. So, yeah, man, I want to send a special shout out to uh, Manuel. Governor, who's the headmaster at Newcastle High School, I'm hoping to build better relationships there. And with, like I said, with some of the schools that I, I, was, I was at, and I hope to inspire other people to do the same for their schools. We have the ability to build a better country, to build better communities. And then some of the more important work I'm going to be doing is just traveling and, and getting families to work together, getting fathers to be less absent, getting mothers to be less angry and give the fathers access getting more children to love their parents, even though their parents are different, and building stronger communities where at least you get to know your neighbors and what your neighbors are about and set up these WhatsApp groups and have these prize and these things that are really, really dope. A lot of work, but uh, someone has to do it. I'm putting my hand up and I'm going to be collaborating with all these people that I keep mentioning who are also passionate about building a better South Africa. Love you guys very much. Pen you all the black pen. Have a great and blessed day. Let's keep it going. Please join as a paying member of my channel so that I can raise the funds to do more amazing work. I appreciate the people that contribute money in the comments section as well. And hopefully sooner rather than later, I'm going to partner with nonprofits organizations that I will promote 
so that people can contribute to them and hopefully they can pay me to market for them and be an ambassador for the good work that they're doing. Shout out to Action Society, Gift of the Givers, Afri Forum, um, Soweto Parliament and some of the amazing people that are doing great work. Shout out to Tutu Zane Zuma, Winston Innes and the guys that are doing charity work in Durban. We need more young leaders, more young lions that are roaring, that are making sure that in their communities they are making a change. Spy Lee for Yella. Hope you guys have a great day. And send out a cool about it. The pen is the sword pen. Pen you well the black pen. Cheers.